Hello everyone, how are we doing today? I hope we're doing great. Um, I thank God, I give him glory, I give him honor, I give him praise for all that he has done and all that he's doing. I missed you guys though. <laughs> I missed you guys. Um, but before we go into today's business, um, give me a moment please. Um, how have you guys been though <laughs> how have you guys been i hope you guys have been great it's been what it's been but i give god praise i honor him i thank him for him will make it possible for me to be here today it's only by his grace. It's only by his grace. It's only by his grace. You know. It's only by his grace. Give me a moment, please. I'll be with you shortly. Um, well, before we go into today's business, right? Let's quickly pray. And then we can continue with our conversation. <laughs> because I don't ever want to forget um, to pray. Um, give me a moment. I'm gonna be there soon. <laughs> Okay, let's quickly pray. Father, we thank you, we exalt you, we give you praise, we magnify your name for who you are, shine of days you are, I am that I am, the lion of the tribe of Judah, you are the omnipotent God, omniscient God, you are the almighty God. Father, we thank you for this hour, we thank you for this day, we thank you for making it possible for us to be here in the land of the living. Father, we ask for your mercy, O oh God, in whichever way we have gotten it wrong, we teach you over, let your mercy find us, let your mercy speak for us in the name of your precious son, Yeshua. Father, we have gathered here once again, Jehovah, to do your business, not my business or the business of anybody or anything, but your business, God. So, Father, we ask, O oh God, God, that your mercy will find us, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you give us the strength. Sweet, gentle spirit of God will welcome you, will rely solely on you. Give me the utterance. May I not say what I haven't been asked to say, and may I not do what I haven't been asked to do. Intercede on behalf of us as we intercede for others. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Holy Spirit, take control. Have your way, sweet, gentle spirit of God. Yes, the hour has come. May everything be done according to his divine will. Not according to my will or according to the will of anybody or anything, but according to the divine will of God. 
God, I ask that you touch the heart of your people. Sweet, gentle spirit, convince your heart. May the words that will be spoken today be like a seed planted in their hearts. Give me the strength, the boldness to speak the truth. I thank you, dear God. I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus. I cover the airways with the blood of Jesus. May that blood speak for us right now like never before. Have your way, sweet, gentle spirit of God. Lord, we say thank you. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we have prayed. Amen. 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 All right, people. So like I said, before we go into today's business, um, let's chat a little bit, okay? So today we're going to be talking about when we are weak, it is strong. That's our topic for today. And today, um, I just want to speak as I'm led to, um, I've not written anything down because yesterday when I was waiting on the Lord to give me the word for today, he said, go there and, and say what's been going on, going on with you. You know, so I didn't bother to write it because I felt like, okay, I already know what's going on. So, um, what I'm going to be talking about today, um, might not sound right to people, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Everybody mustn't be the same. Everybody mustn't speak the same. And everybody mustn't see things the same way. But when it comes to Christianity, it is one gospel. It is one God. It is one Jesus. One Holy Spirit. We don't have different ones. And so... It's not, um, so when we all come out here and speak different things, you know, it makes people begin to wonder, like, how can they all be Christians and they all have this different perspective about things or they're all saying different things about the, the God that they call upon or about um, the Bible or about Jesus or, or about the gospel rather, you know. But if we're able to come out here as Christians and actually speak the truth, because God is truth and he resides in us. Jesus, is, Jesus resides in us and he is truth. There is no lie in him, you know? And that's why the Holy Spirit was given to us. I've spoken about this before and I'm still speaking about it again. The Holy Spirit was given to us to lead us and guide us and to lead us into all truths. And so if the Holy Spirit is the one leading us all, how come we have all this different um, perspective about things? How come we feel very comfortable coming out here, you know, to speak what we speak? Because the one thing I've come to learn about the Spirit of God is that He doesn't lie. And... If you're doing what you're doing for the glory of God and not for yourself, the Spirit of the Lord will give you the word to speak. And any word that he gives to you is the truth. You know, when I tell people that, say, I'd rather learn from the Holy Spirit. I'll rather be led by the Holy Spirit. I'll rather be guided by the Holy Spirit than man. They think that, oh, she's rebellious or, oh, she doesn't, you know, she's not serving God. And then they bring up all the scriptures about leadership and all that. But I told us some time ago in Matthew 23 where it was written and it stated clear that Jesus is our only leader and God is our only father. And so we cannot, we shouldn't call anybody a, fa a spiritual father, anybody that guides us spiritually a father because God is our only father. So I rather learn from the Holy Spirit because I know that it's the truth, right? Anyways, why I'm saying this is because um, of what I want to talk about today. So our scripture today is, we just have one scripture and, it, and that's 2 Corinthians 12. I'll read um, 9 to 10. 
and he says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is the New King James, right? And so what I want to talk to, to us about also reminded me of something that Paul said, that there is a ton in his flesh. And, you know, he has prayed, but it will not go away. And so today I want to talk, I want to, talk to us about that, about the fact that when we're weak, that's when God is strongest. So um, if you notice for like two weeks, I wasn't online. I couldn't bring myself to come online because... The enemy dealt with me so badly, you know, in such a way that I gave up completely on my faith. I gave up on myself. I gave up on God. I was like, God, I am done. You know, I just started asking, are you really, do you really exist, God? I'm telling you, I got to that point where I was like, God, is this all a scam? All these things we'll talk about, are they all lies? These things I come online to talk about, are you really the one telling me these things to talk about? Or I'm actually crazy, you know? And I was like, God, are you for real? Like, truly, do you exist? And these things that we'll talk about, are they true? You know, I just, I got to that point where I just doubted everything that I've come to know. I doubted everything. I doubted God. I doubted myself. I doubted, you know, because there are times in your life, you know, when you come to that place where you're like, God, I mean, I've been praying concerning the situation for so long. I've been praying concerning this for so long. How come, you know, nothing has been done? How come, you know, it seems like it's a mockery? If you really, I come here to tell people that God is a miracle working God. God is this and God is that and God is that. And I say, God, but if you're really God and if you're really doing these things that I come here to say, how come this and this and this and this and this is like this like that like that even though i have prayed even though i have fasted even though i've been faithful even though i've been submissive even though you know i just kept on i was like man god i don't think that this is real you know i think that maybe this is just a religious thing you know and so i was so angry at god angry at myself and i was like well i tried it and this is what it is, you know? And so I, I said, I wasn't going to pray. I wasn't praying. I was so mad. I was so upset. But, you know, God has a way of doing things. And when he wants to make you understand something, he makes you understand it. And so I was like that for like a week or so. Like I was really, really mad and upset. And I was like, I'm done. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. I was like, God, okay, I've done my part. Because truth be told, even when I wasn't really um, submitted to God, certain things were better. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, God, I've never experienced things like this, even when I wasn't faithful. So how come now that I'm faithful, I'm going through this over and over again, and it's like nothing is happening. I was really upset, right? And so um, I reached out to somebody, I think maybe like after a week or almost two weeks, to pray with me because, you know, even though I was feeling the way that I was feeling, I, inside of me, I still felt bad because truth be told, I see God has a way of doing stuff. And I don't understand the reason why, you know, like I said, God is putting me out here. I think he just wants people to see the struggle, you know, how I'm struggling, you know, being faithful because even though I, I was feeling the way that I was feeling, and I said I was done with God, there is still a part of me that felt bad, that was afraid of leaving God, that was afraid of going against God. That was still a part of me. You know what I mean? So some mornings when I wake up, I'm just like, oh my God. You know, my spirit will just start saying, is this what you really want to do? You know, I, I love you. I, I hear the Holy Spirit actually say that I, I love you. You know, all this kind of stuff. And I start feeling guilty and feeling bad, but I'm like, oh man, God, I'm not doing this. This is all me. This is all in my head. 
you know so after like a week or almost two i reached out to somebody to pray with me you know and we prayed i said okay you know that particular day i woke up the day before because i was feeling the way i was feeling i said okay let me fast i didn't feel like it but i just let me just fast you know just i don't know because my conscience like i was feeling really bad and i think it was just the holy spirit letting me know that my child this is not the way to go and so i did the fast and when i woke up in the morning i fasted from the previous night you know till the next day when i woke up in the morning i called this um this pastor to pray with me and they would pray and you know but even though i was praying i wasn't really i still had that feeling like even till now I, i'm still a little bit you know like i'm not still full full into me like i was before so and then we prayed and that passed and there was something i've been praying to god about that actually even came to pass in this season that i'm going through what i'm going through right but i wasn't even excited about it i was like god that's, that's the thing because you know when you want something for so long and you've been praying about it for so long and when it finally comes i don't know for others but for me i'm not excited about it anymore because i i feel like man i've prayed for this thing for so long and maybe at that time it's really not necessary or something i don't know but that, that excitement wasn't really there but even though i said i said to god father i thank you you know what i mean so i just kept on you know struggling 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 there are days i just don't want to stand up or even pray and all that and God is a gentleman, like I told us, you know, he gives you space, you know, sometimes to just decompress. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word to use. Even though I still felt the way that I was feeling. Meanwhile, before this attack came, I had a dream. And I woke up that morning, I was like, Jesus, I couldn't remember the dream, but I knew that I had this very bad attack. And... I was like, God, I don't know if it's about my family or myself. I don't know what this attack was. So I called um, a pastor friend of mine and he said, I called him. I said, see, I just woke up from, from, from this dream and it was really scary. Like I, I said, so what was the dream? I said, I can't remember, but I feel like somebody attacks me, you know, or there's an attack coming, but I don't know if it's for me or my family. I don't know where the attack is coming from, but it was really intense. Please, can you pray with me? And so we prayed together and he said oh all i keep hearing is beware that was what he told me he said all i keep hearing is beware right i said okay and then uh, before this attack the lord the holy spirit gave me a word that i spoke about i think it was perseverance you know like i tell us sometimes when things happen to when the lord gives me a word i might not really be in that space but uh maybe after a week or a day or something i find myself in that situation and I will now understand, okay, this is why God gave me that word. You know what I mean? But sometimes I might be in that space. But I remember that the week before I spoke about perseverance. And then the other week I spoke about cast all of your cares upon him. And so I guess the Holy Spirit was just giving me this word to prepare me for what was coming. But I guess I wasn't just as sensitive as I should be. Or God just wanted to show me, you know, that this thing called Christianity, this work with him, is not a show. Because you're born again does not mean that the enemy will not attack. In fact, that's when the enemy will even attack you much more. Because the enemy's agenda is to get you away from God, is to be disobedient to God, is to turn your back from God. And once he achieves that, once you let him achieve that, then he has won. But you know, they make us understand that when you're born again, and that's what I'm saying, that what I'm going to say, you know, might be different from what others talk about, but you know they make us understand that once you're born again and you begin to walk with god they make it seem like everything is just going to be the same way provided you pray and you fast or you pay your tithes and pay your offerings no there is real war there is real attack and we as christians need to understand that we're constantly in a battle right some of us are blessed to even get a warning like me i got the warning before it happened even though I couldn't remember exactly what it was, but I knew that something was coming and what was coming for me was heavy. 
you know but when he came when the enemy attack like you know when you're in a battlefield and you're fighting and you don't have any shield so the enemy was just hitting me from every angle and he was actually getting me now it wasn't that god wasn't there that's why i'm here today to talk about this it wasn't that's what the holy spirit made me to understand it wasn't that god wasn't there god was there god god sees everything but sometimes God will allow you go through it in order to teach you a lesson or in order for you to understand him better. I think I've spoken about this thing um, maybe many months ago where I was talking about there were three things that, you know, that God um, lets you go through. When you go through, there are three things that God wants to show you, to show you his glory, you know, to teach you a lesson and what was the last one i can't even remember that but i remember i spoke about it so god already gave the, the, the god already warned me of, of what was coming but you know when it happened i just was there and the enemy was hitting at me so badly and he was actually getting me he was getting me because i got to that place where the enemy wanted me to be which is which was to give up on myself and to give up on god and to be like i said i was wondering like god do you really exist do you are you really a miracle working god can you really do all these things that i've been coming out here to say you know i was at that place i was like man i don't think this is real i think this is just religious ja um jargon or whatever it was i was at that place imagine me but you know i never thought that i would find myself at that place because i felt like i had a good relationship with god i felt like okay because i hear these words from the holy spirit i felt like okay i'm good with god to the extent where i cannot get to that place but i got there and a lot of us christians actually get there and most often when we get there you know we'll give up on god or we'll give up on ourselves and i remember that when I, the week before um i went off i told us about perseverance and i told us that it doesn't mean because you are saved that you won't come to a place where you 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 backslide or you um you lose faith but the holy spirit made me to understand that even though you get to that place right because you're truly saved you will still find your way back you will repent and turn away so even though i was feeling the way that i was feeling that was still the part of me that that had that belief and that knew that you know this thing you're saying this thing that you're going through is just a phase or they're saying to me but you know that what you're saying is not true you know that god loves you you know that you can do this you can do that you can do that but i was at that point where i wanted to say god show it to me like i'm just tired you know and as much as i was saying that i still found my way back to even put myself in that place of wanting to fast to even put myself in that place of calling somebody to pray with me to even put myself in that place where I started praying for mercy and for forgiveness. And all this time, God was watching. As a Christian, there comes a time when you are in the valley of humiliation. It doesn't mean that God is not there. Where it seems like the enemy is giving it to you full dose and there seems to be no help. It doesn't mean that God is not there. But I'm here to let us understand that in our weakest moment, at that time when we felt that we we're done and we can't do it anymore, God is saying to us that that is when He is strongest. Can you imagine that? But you cannot feel His strength because you are that place where you feel like you know you are done. But God is telling us today that yes you are my child yes you have this relationship with me yes you're doing everything you know to be right with me he said but that does not mean that you would not find yourself in the value of humiliation time to time where the enemy is dealing with you so badly where it seems like you don't have any strength god is saying to us that when you get to that point where you don't have any strength to even take one more step where you find yourself even Thinking of turning back, God is saying that in that time, that is when he's strongest. 
<laughs> his ways are not out. see our god is a mysterious god and he works in ways that we cannot see you know because if you understand him what then is going to be the fun in following him So a lot of us get to that place. That's no matter. Even the best of the best, even bishops and reverends and and popes and you know whatever names that they call them today, whatever title that they owe, everybody find themselves in that valley of humiliation where it seems like nothing is happening. It depends on your work with God. Your valley of humiliation right now might not be the same in another three years but that is when you feel the strength of god more like i'm here today talking about what i'm talking about honestly i never knew that i'll be able to come online to even speak about stuff like this because i felt like i was i was you know, embarrassing myself. I felt like I was making a ridicule of myself coming here to speak the things that I speak, you know, because I had us believe that once you're submissive and obedient and, you know, doing um, right, you know, everything is just, everything will just go the way that, you know, you think it's gonna go. And that's what a lot of people think, but that's not the truth. In fact, that is when you get more attacked. And the Bible makes us understand that it's not like the weapons will not form, but they will not prosper. Yes, the enemy attacked me so badly and did all the things that he did to me. Yes, I felt it, like really, really feel it. But I'm still here. Meaning that the weapon formed, but it did not prosper. And this is not the first time. And I know it's not going to be the last time. Because God will keep showing you his strength in your weakness. Because this work with God is not about our strength. We don't have the strength to work this work. It is his strength that carries us on this work. And so if you don't go through the valley of humiliation, how do you see or feel the strength of God? Most often when we find ourselves there, we give up. But if you're truly saved, and if you truly love this God that you call upon, you will find your way back. Because your life will not even be complete. I don't know for others, but you know, you will not even feel complete. Like I told you, I was in that place where I was so mad, but there was still the part of me that was, was, was feeling so bad that I was in that space. It would never leave you alone. No matter how bad it is. The enemy's agenda is to get you away from God. Is to make you be disappointed in God. Is to make you, you know, reject God. That's his agenda. So he will do any and everything to get you to that place. But if you're truly saved, I told us that it is in the process that you actually fall in love with God. Genuinely. If you're truly saved and you're truly in love with God, even though the enemy is attacking you like that, and even though you're feeling the way that you're feeling, your love for God will, will be what will hold you. And that's why he said that when we're weak, that's when he is strongest. So don't mind anybody that says, oh, you know, once you're born again, you know, everything is just going to go right and everything. The enemy cannot do this. Da, da, da. The enemy will come. It is called the value of humiliation. Time to time, we'll all get into that place because God has to show us his strength. So we'll understand that it's not by our power. It's not by our might. But a lot of us Christians are walking this walk in our strength, thinking that it's about us, 
thinking that it is we or it is our strength that carries us through no it is the strength of god so time to time you get to that place where you become so weak just so you know that your physical strength cannot carry you it is the strength of god that does just like we do when god allowed the enemy to come and deal with him you all know that story in that valley of humiliation job would have given up completely like some of us do but the strength of god was what carried him through it that even though job was weak and he was complaining and lamenting and all that he still could not cause god he still could not do certain things why because he has come to know the god that he serves and is in love with the god that he serves so this work with god is a process is a learn it's like it's a school that you have to learn so you cannot learn god by reading a book you cannot learn god by listening to somebody else you can only learn god by working with god and going through every situation that he allows to come your way just so you can see him for who he really is nobody can explain god to you nobody can make nobody even me cannot explain who this god is to you and that is why i encourage us every time as christians see don't get to know god based on anybody's perspective get to know god for yourself it is a personal relationship don't let anybody deceive you Whatever relationship that person has with God, you can have the same relationship with God. And it is, a, it, is, it is when you are in that relationship with God that God begins to show you himself. All these things that we read about in the Bible, it is when you're working with God that you begin to experience, you begin to see these things and what they truly mean. It is an experience. Christianity. It's an experience. You must experience God. But a lot of us don't want to. Because why? We have this, they've taught us to think that, oh, with God, it is just about this and it's just about that. No. God will have to show you himself. Nobody can show God to you. Anybody that tells you that he can show you, God, that person is lying. God will have to show you himself because we all have different calls upon our lives. Before we came into this world, we all have our assignments. And my assignment is different from your assignment. I think I've spoken about this before. So the way God will reveal himself to you is different from the way God will reveal himself to me. Why? Because we are not on the same assignment. And God will only reveal himself to you in a way that you will be able to fulfill his will you'll be able to fulfill the ass assignment that has been given to you that is why god can reveal himself to me in this manner but he will reveal himself to you into another person another manner and i made us to understand some time ago and that's what the holy spirit made me to understand you can never know god just as our faces are different just as we're all different that is how god is no but no one person can say i know god completely no God reveals himself to you on this walk. As, as I said, this walk with God is stage by stage. You cannot move from stage one to stage ten. It's not possible. You, from stage one, you get to stage two. It's a gradual process with God. And so when you get to stage two, God reveals himself to you in a different dimension. You get to stage three, God reveals himself to you in a different dimension. That's how it goes. It's a continuous process with God. No one person knows God completely. No. So basically what I'm trying to make us understand is that the time has come for us to want to have this relationship with God personally. Not because of what somebody said. Or not because of something, but because you truly want to know God for who he really is. How many of us actually want to know God for who he truly is? Not who he truly is by him giving us something, but who he truly is that we've come to hear or we've come to read or we've come to, you know, see 
had maybe seen a movie or something. These things that they, they let us know about God. Unless you are on this walk with God, you cannot really know God like that. You can't know God by just reading the Bible or by just going to church on Sunday or going for Bible study. No, you can never know God like that. It's on this personal relationship, this walk with God, that you get to know God for who God truly is. So even though I felt that I knew God, <laughs> even though I felt that I knew God, God was saying, my child, you, don't, you still don't know me. You still have a long way to go. I still have so many things to teach you. And so he allowed the enemy to come and the enemy came and dealt with me, even though God warned me before time to prepare me. But the enemy dealt with me in such a way that I gave up on myself and I gave up on God. <laughs> but God was only showing me my child. See, there is a part of me that you still don't know, which is that when you were weak, when you were in your lowest of lows, that is when I, God, <laughs> I am strong. God had to teach me that even though I know that this work is not by my strength, I've not experienced it to know that truly it's not by my strength. With God, it's an experience. With God, it's an experience. So if you're in that place where you think that, God, I can't take one more step. Oh, my God, I can't do this anymore. See, I have been in that place so many times. And funny enough, every time I get to that place, it gets worse. One, the attack is to see if you're going to give up and turn away completely. Two, the attack is also to teach you Whatever it is that God wants to teach you. On this work with God, the stage that I'm in or that I'm on is different from the stage that you are. So what God wants to teach me in this season is different from what God wants to teach you in, in, in the same season. But at the end of the day, we should glorify God. We should rejoice we should even boast in our infirmities, like we read. We should. We should. Excuse me. Because then you know that even though the enemy has done all these terrible things to you, you still love God much more. That's, that's what you get to learn. That you love God so much to let go. Even though you feel like it. Even though everything, your circumstances is showing you that that is the best way. Man, go back and do what you used to do. All this, all that, all that. But your love for God will say, no, I've passed this, I've passed this. This work with God, eh? there is no turning back. It's either or. If he takes my life, let it take my life. That is the place we need to come to. I don't know how it's going to be. The next attack, I don't know how it's going to be. But if he takes my life, he takes my life. And people don't come out here to discuss these things. So when it happens to certain people, they don't even know how to handle it. And that's why I'll say that some people might not agree with what I'm saying. See, if we're able to come out here and begin to let people understand that even as a man of God, or a seasoned minister of God, or whatever it is that you are, that you go through attacks, and sometimes you get to that place where you want to give up. Yes! Anybody that tells you that they don't, they are lying. Some of them have mastered it to the point where they know how to react when the enemy comes with all that baggage. But for the new Christians, you know, that are still finding their feet with God, if these seasoned ones, the learned ones, the ones that have been with God for so long can come out and let them understand that say, it is a part of the process. It is a part of this work that you will get to that place time to time when the enemy comes barging and it's like it's too much and you want to give up on God. 
It's not because you have done anything wrong. It is because God needs to teach you. You need to experience God on a different level, on a different dimension. So what the enemy might come to me with will be different from what the enemy will come to you with because the enemy's agenda, like I told us, is to get us away from God. Like me, I told you when you happened, I said, God, even when I wasn't faithful, I never experienced this. Even when I wasn't faithful, things were just happening the way that I wanted them. So how come now that I'm faithful, things are this way? Because when I wasn't faithful, the enemy knows that I belong to him. So he doesn't even need to bother himself about me because he already knows that he has me. Or he had me. Right? But now that I'm faithful, the enemy knows that I'm a threat. So he will do everything and anything to get me back to the place where I was. That is his job. You can't take his job away from him. And a lot of people have fallen and have remained there because nobody wants to come out and say, see, it is a part of the process. It is. It, it is. There is nothing wrong. But God is saying to us, instead of focusing on what the enemy is doing to you, you should focus on the fact that even in that situation, God is still so much strong. He said, when we're weak, that's when he's strongest. You might not see it, you might not feel it, but God is there. Just as Job couldn't feel God, he couldn't see God in anything that was happening to him, but God was there. And it was the strength of God that carried him through. And it is the strength of God that will see you through. So don't give up. No matter how much the enemy comes to deal with you. See, yes, he has dealt with you. Wake up the next day. Like me, it took me two weeks, almost two weeks. It might take some people one month. They might still be mad. I was mad at God, mad at myself. But here I am today. Here I am today. It wasn't by my power to come out of that place that the enemy put me. It wasn't by my strength. It was God. So don't let anybody make you feel like, oh, you're not serving God. Because they want to make you think that serving God is like this. You have to, you know, at every point you're, you're this. That's not true. That's not true. The enemy deals with every, anybody that genuinely serves God. The enemy deals with you steadily, time to time. And the, when the Lord allows it to happen, so you can experience him on a different dimension. Basically, that's what I'm saying. God allows it to happen. Just so he can show you that he is God differently from the way that you have come to know. And so perseverance is key. On this work with God. You have to persevere. Even though you don't feel like it. I told you that even though I was in that space, the Holy Spirit was still speaking to me. God would never leave you alone. He's always there. In it all, he is there. I didn't want to listen. Doesn't mean I wasn't speaking. I was too mad to listen to what he was saying. But he was still there. Letting me know how much he loves me. So there is nothing wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you have sinned or God doesn't want you or God is angry with you or one thing, one thing. Uh -uh. It happens to everybody. And it's a continuous thing. There is no one Christian. I'm telling you, there is no one Christian. Even Paul, even the old apostles, they went through it. The enemy went out. Some of them were beheaded. Some of them were thrown in jail. Some of them, you know, people, they went through it. There is no one Christian that doesn't get to that place time to time. Some of them are released and in another few months they are, they are, they are imprisoned and all that. Some of them were released and after a while they, they kill them. You know, every Christian, if you're a genuine Christian and you're truly serving God, you're a threat to the enemy. So you're in a constant battle. You're in a constant battle. And if you trust God, 
<laughs> if you trust this guy, you will always triumph. There is nothing the enemy wants to give to you right now that God cannot give you times 10. And that's something that I've come to learn. There is nothing appealing that the enemy wants to give to me. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Yes, I might need money desperately. But at this point, I'm not willing to do anything out of the extra, anything extraordinary to get money. Why? Because of my relationship with God. Yes, I might feel a certain type of way. But that will not take me out there to go look for somebody to, you know, maybe you're lonely or you're, you're sad or whatever. You want to go out there to go sleep with it. It, 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 it won't. Why? Because you're in love with the God that you call upon. And you know that God frowns on it. So when the enemy begins to show you things to make you think contrary, that is his job to get you out of the way. But God is saying to us today, he said, even when the enemy comes like that and you are very weak, God is saying that I am right there and I am strong. That's even when I am strongest. So don't give up. We will all find ourselves in that valley of humiliation time to time. And if you persevere, you're going to experience God in a completely different way. Different from the way that you have known God. So my, my, what I'm saying to us today is, stop relying on people to teach you about God, to tell you about God. Rely in God to show you who he is. Have an experience with God. Have an encounter with God. But how can you have it? It is by genuinely seeking God and repenting of all your sins and accepting his son Jesus. And say, God, I don't know where this is going to lead me. But I've heard so much about you. But I want to know you, God, for you. I don't want to know you based on anybody's perspective. I want to know you for you. Show me who you are. And God will hold your hand and begin to... See how Moses prayed. He wanted to see God. He wanted to see God. He wanted to see God. We all come to that place where we want to know this God as Christians. If you're genuinely saved. And the only way that God will show you himself is through these situations that you go through. That's how you get to know that God is a deliverer. That's how you get to know that God is a healer. That's how you get to know that God is a provider. That's how you get to know God that he is I am. He said I am. He is I am to anything we want him to be. Well, it is in this walk with God, in this process, that you experience God as all these things. That is a consuming fire. Ha. That it is only what he speaks that comes to pass in your life. There is nothing anybody will say that will come to pass when he, Jehovah, has not spoken. It is in the process that you begin to know God, you begin to experience God on these levels. But if you, if you, if you, if you, if you stop because the attack is too much, if you stop because, you know, the enemy is coming at you with everything that he has, how then are you going to experience God? That is, is indeed your savior. Out there are you going to experience God. That is the one that fights your battles. How there are you going to experience God. David experienced God. On different levels. And that's why he was able to write up the book of Psalms. How God brought him out of many waters. It was an experience. David did not just sit down to write those things. He experienced these things. Why? Because he chose 
to walk with God. David came to a point where, you know, he too messed up at, at time to time, but he didn't stop him. Why? Because he was in love with God. When you're in love with somebody, it is hard for anybody to just tell you whatever and then you just move away. Uh-uh. It is hard. Even loving somebody like, you know, maybe your spouse or your friend or something, and then somebody comes to say, oh, she did this or he did that and all that, you know? Yes, you are hot, but you don't just move away. Why? Because of the love that you have for the person. So when you're in love with God, even though the enemy comes with all this baggage and all these things that he comes with, the love for God will still keep you. That love is the strength of God. So don't think that this is just you. Don't think that you have done anything wrong. Don't think whatever. Just know that when God allows the enemy to come at you like that, it means that God wants you to experience sin on a completely different level. So Christianity is work. <laughs> Not all this make believe that will seal. Real Christianity is work. You must end your way. But the good thing is that you're not doing it by your strength. The Spirit of God is there at all times. To strengthen you when you're weak. To lead you right when you're going astray. Even though your heart is saying, oh, oh, but the Spirit of the Holy Spirit was still saying. But that's not the right thing. You know that God loves you. You know this, you know that. You, God has given you the provision that when you find yourself in this place, that provision is what takes you through it. But how can you see the provision or know this provision if you don't find yourself in that place and you give up? So even though I went through what I went through and it took me two weeks or almost two weeks to get back on, that does not mean that I will not still go through it time to come. It might not be the same situation but i will still find myself in that valley of humiliation where i begin to ask god is this are you real god are you really alive god this god that but that it is a part of the process okay people we leave we'll fall we we'll stand up we'll fight again we'll fall we we'll stand up we'll fight again we'll just keep going there is no turning back there is no turning back. See, when you get on this walk with God genuinely, there is no turning back. You yourself, you know that you can't turn back anymore. Because there is nothing out there that really interests you. That is worth losing God for. Uh-uh. I have not seen that thing. Though. Maybe the enemy will show me something in time to come. But even if he likes, let him make it as magnificent as possible. I might fall. Yes, but I will rise again and keep moving and keep pushing and keep pressing. Why? Because I'm in love with the God that I call upon. It might not seem like, you know, he hears my prayers. It might not seem like he sees what is going on. It might not seem like that to you. But he does. Because he neither sleeps nor slumbers. Every prayer he hears. A God is a mighty God. Do you know what it means for one for one entity to hear the prayers of everybody in the world at the same time? Even the ones that are spoken, the ones that are not spoken out, he hears it all. That's the kind of God that you deal with. <laughs> it might not seem like it, but I'm telling you, my people, God is awesome. Okay? So if you're in that valley of humiliation, know that God is your strength. That even though it seems like you're too weak to take one more step, that even though it seems like you have given up completely, God is there. A strength will carry you through. Okay? Don't sit there. Don't dwell in it. Don't give up. Have faith. Trust God. Because our God works in ways that we cannot see. All right, people. That being said, I hope I encourage somebody. 
That being said, we're still going to do what God has called us to do, which is to intercede His divine will. So we're still going to pray, you know, the divine will of God. And whoever that is going through what they're going through, and the things that God is not there, or God doesn't hear them, or things, you know, that God has forgotten about them, we're also going to pray for you today so you can feel the strength of God and know that He would never abandon you, nor forsake you, nor give up on you. God is constantly there sharing you on. Go on, go on, go on. You don't have to believe the lies of the enemy. God is constantly sharing you up. My child, you can do this. Take one more step. Keep going. Even though the enemy has dealt with you badly, you have injuries all over. God is saying, take one more step. And if you keep listening to the voice, you will continue to put one step in front of you. The next step, every day you will keep going, you will keep going. And then, you know, it's a journey, <laughs> an experience. But you know that at the end of the day, You've got victory. Why? Because you serve a mighty God. The owner of everything. And he has already given you the victory when Jesus died. That's why they say you have to work out your salvation. It's not because the enemy just throws one thing at you. You just give up and say, ah, oh, I'm not. Uh, 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 uh. You have to fight. You must fight for your destiny. Nobody can fight for your destiny for you. You must fight. You see these boxers, um, these guys that um, boxers, right? That's what they call them. When they go on the ring and they are fighting, they are fighting. They are fighting for their destiny. Because they know that once they, that once they are done and they win, they know what they have in store, what is there for them. You must fight. Nobody will come and fight for you. They're not going to call somebody else when they are fighting in the ring. They don't say, oh, let his brother come help him. Or let his sister come help him. Or let his pastor come fight for him. You must fight. You are the one that will fight for your destiny. Nobody else. Your pastor cannot fight for your destiny. Your bishop cannot fight for your destiny. Your husband cannot fight or your wife cannot fight for your destiny. Your children cannot fight for your... Your parents cannot fight for your destiny. You have to fight for your destiny. The enemy has robbed a lot of us off of our destinies. Why? Because we'll, we refuse to fight. We gave up. When you have God, you have all the strength that you need. It might not seem like it, but his strength will definitely see you. That's why I say his grace is sufficient. Not to go and see, no. Remember that. Because grace abides does not mean that we'll continue in sin. Sin is a no-no for God. Sin, it is what separates us from God. Sin is something God cannot behold. And the enemy knows that. And that's why the enemy uses sin to want to take you away from God. Because he knows that once you dwell in sin, there is a separation between you and God. Instantly, there is no story about it though. Forget this one that they tell you that once saved is always saved. It's a blatant lie. I have told us this before. That's the lie of the enemy. That's what the enemy have used to deceive the children of God today. That's why they dwell in sin and yet they think that they are serving God. That's why they dwell in sin yet they think that their God is taking their offerings and their tithes and their seeds. It's a lie. Save it. Sin is a no-no for God. So sin might look inviting, might look whatever that it looks. But that's how the devil destroys you, sin. Sin. Okay, people? So once you make the conscious decision to say, God, I'm going to serve you no matter what it takes. That's all you need to do. And leave the rest for him. To take you on this journey, this experience. All right, people. So just as I come out here to intercede and pray for others, pray for me too. Because it's a constant battle. As a Christian, as a genuine Christian, you're in constant war with the enemy, with the forces of darkness. 
The devil wants to take as many people as he can. But God doesn't want anybody to perish. God wants us all to be saved. But truth be told, we can't all be saved. That's the truth. Because he has given us the free will to choose. If you choose to serve God, you will serve God no matter what comes your way. Until you get to that point of saying nevertheless. Even Jesus, the son of God, that has God's blood flowing in his veins. Eh? When he saw the, when the enemy came and he saw it, he said, God, I wish you can just take this cup away from me. Jesus. That one. No, he, nobody slept with his mother to, to conceive him. Supernatural child. Seth. The enemy dealt with him and he got to that place where he said, God, please, if you will, take this cup away from me. Because it was too much. So if it can be too much for, for Jesus, why do you think you, you won't get to that place where it will be too much for you? But Jesus had an understanding that his love for God was much more than anything that he was going through. So Jesus understood that yes, I'm tired. Yes, I can take one more step. Yes, I wish this would stop. Yes, this, yes, that. But you understood that his love for God was much more. So he said, Father, Lord, but nevertheless, not my will. <laughs> nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Because he knows that his will is not the right one. It is the will of God. That is the right one. So even though God has given us the free will to choose, we see how to have that understanding that it is still not about our will, but the will of God. Do you love God enough to say, Father, yes, this, I said, I pray. When the enemy was coming at me, I said, God, I know that, you know, you have given me the free will to choose. And I know that I have given up my free will. But I said, God, today I want to use my free will. Please, God, let me use my will. For just this one situation, let me use my will. I pray that prayer, I'm telling you. But after I prayed that prayer, I understood that God, but still, as much as this is my will, nevertheless, let your will be done. That's why I'm here today. My will was, I don't want to do this again. I want to serve God in quiet, where nobody sees what I'm going through, where I don't need to come out and tell anybody that I'm struggling, where I don't need to say anything. Nobody knows my business. I don't know anybody's business. I'm just fighting my battle by myself. In, by myself. I didn't want to come here and be talking and saying all these things. But I understand that even though that's my will to serve God quietly without anybody knowing my challenges or knowing that I'm going through stuff or whatever, but that's not the will of God for me. Nevertheless, let his will be done. If this is his will for me to come out here and be saying these things, so be it. So be it. So I hope and pray that what I've said today has helped somebody. Don't give up on God because God will never give up on you. When you are weak, God is the strong. That's when God is strong. Someday I'm going to be talking about the value of humiliation deeper. You know, today I'm just, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm sure the Holy Spirit is going to give me a word, a full um, word for the value of humiliation. All right, people. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. God will bless you. Jehovah will give you praise because you are worthy, oh God. You are a great and mighty God. There is no like you a set of days. You are the beginning. You are the end. You are the one that knows the end from the beginning, Father. You are a mighty and loving God, a God that would never forsake us, a God that neither sleeps nor slumbers, a God the sits in heaven and use the earth as his footstool that sees it all. Father, I will bless your name for your word today, for the encouragement. God will give you praise. Yama suhi yekaseli hiyama.
ama se hila hima su hi kasule hi ama ma se ie kasule hi you are a gracious god there is none like you jehovah father we will bless you for even finding us worthy to partake of your love lord we worship you We thank you for the lives of your people out there. Those that are going through one battle or the other. Father Lord, I pray, oh God, that it will feel your strength in their weakness. That it will understand that when they are weak, that's when you are strongest. Envelop them with your love, with your strength. Just as you did for me, God. Ima su ima hama se hie kasule hia mama su hie kasele hia mama su hie kasele hia ma ima se hie le kasuma hama se hila hia ma ama sa hie le kasema hama su hie le kasema hama sa hie le ima mo hie le if I set your hearts true and true, O God. If you find any iniquity in us, O God, let your mercy find us this hour. Let your mercy speak for us, dear God. Mo hie kasele hia ma su hie ma hie kasele hia ma mo ma se hila hia ma. Suhi ka sele hi ma ama se hi lo hi ma se hi le ka zule hi ama su ama se hi le hi. But nevertheless, let your will be done in our lives, O God. Mo hi ka sele hi ama su hi le hi ka zule hi ama ma hi ma hi ma se hi la hi ka zula hi ama mo se ka zile hi ama su hi la hi ka sele hi ma su hi mo hi la hi ama se hi le hi ka zule hi ama ama sa hi la hi ama mo hi le hi ka se. Oh God, but I will thank you. Our God is not the kind of God that will leave you there in the battlefield by yourself. Uh-uh. <laughs> Even soldiers today, when they go to war, they don't want to leave any of their comrades out there by themselves. I'm not my God. Hima kasele hia masu hie kasele hima ma masu hile ie kasule hima se hila hia ma ma hima ia ma se hie kasule hia masu hie kasele hima ima se hila hia masu hie kasele hima mo hima hie le kasema hama sa hile hia ma mo hi allow God to take you on this experience with him allow God to really show you who he is this is the season for you to experience God for real. Ma hia kasele hia ma su hia ma se hia kase hia ma su hia kasele hima ma su hia le kase ma hama sa hia le kase le hima hama se hia kasele hia ma mo hia le kase ma hama su hia le hi ma hia kasele hia ma se hia le hia ma hama su let don't let anybody take you away from God don't let anybody make you think that it is okay to live in disobedience. It is okay to live in sin. It is not okay. If you love this God genuinely, you understand that God cannot behold sin. You understand that the reason why Jesus came in the first place was so he can reconcile us back to God, was so he can reconcile us back to God. So if God can behold sin, if God is comfortable with you living in sin, God will not need to send his son to die for us. <laughs> He would have left us like that in sin because it is okay by him. But God said, no, my children, sin is something I cannot be owned. So I will send my own to shed his blood, to bridge the gap between us. So why are you still, still, you know, casting more space between you and God? Even though Jesus has come to bridge the gap, God is not okay with sin. God is not okay with sin. So today make up your mind and say, Father, have mercy upon me. See, you don't need to fight sin by yourself. And that's what the Holy Spirit has made us to understand. You, because you don't have the power to reject sin by yourself. It is the Spirit of God that gives you the strength to turn away from sin. But you have to make the conscious decision to say, Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. This is against the God that I serve. This is against the God that I call upon. And I don't want to do it anymore. And let God do the rest. It is what we try to do it in our strength that we keep falling back into sin. But when we let God to do it, you begin to see these things and detest them for what they really are. They, they, be, they begin to irritate you. You begin to see them for what they really are. And then you detest them and you don't want to go back to them anymore. That is how powerful our God is. You can't fight it by your strength. You don't have that strength. 
you don't have that power but you must make that conscious decision you must choose today who you want to serve do you want to serve god or you want to serve the enemy it is your choice to make but whatever choice that you make understand that if you choose to serve god god will never forsake you nor put you to shame god will never do that he will hold your hands and take you on this journey it's a beautiful one because you get to learn and know this God for who he really is. What does the world have to offer you? Nothing but pain. Everything that one has to offer you ends up in pain. It might not be like it right now, but the long run. If you smoke cigarettes a day, years to come, you're going to get the repercussion. Whatever it is, if you do drugs, whatever it is, it has pain at the end of it. That is the only thing the enemy can give you is pain. Nothing else. But our God, our God, is the complete opposite. When you fight on, when you fight this battle and get to the other side, then you will understand the reason why the enemy did all he did to bring you down. When you fight, you don't see it, but he already sees it. He knows. If I let this person get to the other side, oh my God, this person is going to be this, this person is going to be there. And so he's fighting in order for you not to be. So do you want the enemy to keep dragging you backwards? Do you want the enemy to keep denying you of the things that God has in store for you? Or you want to say, God, have your way in my life do with me as you please whatever that makes you happy god i submit myself to you i make myself available use me whichever way that you want and allow god father we bless you god hey lord we thank you you must say here have your way in our lives god Thank you for the hearts that you have changed. Thank you, oh God, for making a way of escape for your people. Thank you, oh God, for the great and mighty works that you have done. Thank you, oh God, for your love, your mercy, your grace, your loving kindness, your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for answered prayers. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise because it belongs to you, dear God. Have your way. Have your way, God, in our lives. In Yeshua's most powerful, most beautiful, and most precious name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, God. Cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. I cover our prayers with the blood of Jesus. Everything that we have done today with the blood, that precious blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. I thank you for that blood, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallowed be your name, Jehovah. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen. So, people, I love you, but God loves you so much more. No one can love you like he does. I'm telling you, there is not one person in this world that can love you even quarter of the way that God loves you. You know why? Because he is your creator. He knows you better than anybody. So he is the only one that can love you right. Allow him to love you the right way. We're so used to worldly love. We're so used to be loved by people that we don't even know that there is a greater and sweeter love, and that is the love of God. 
So if you know that your ways are not right with God, if you know that you have not completely surrendered to God, today is a good day to say, Father, have mercy. Or even if you have surrendered and somewhere you got into the valley of humiliation and the enemy dealt with you so badly that you gave up on God, today is a good day to cry out unto the Lord and say, God, have mercy. Father, forgive me. Wherever I have gotten it wrong, search me through and through, oh God. If you find any iniquity in me, Lord, let your mercy find me. Ask for mercy and resume your, your work. It's a personal race. It is you and God. No you, your pastor and God. No you, this and God. It is you and God. Okay, people? But if you've not accepted Jesus, and if you don't know him, today is a good day to cry out unto the Lord and say, Jesus, Father, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. And I accept him today as my Lord and personal Savior. And I turn away for every, from everything that I have done wrong. Every sin that I have committed. God have mercy upon me. Cry out unto the Lord genuinely. And see what God does. Alright people. I love you. But God loves you so much. So I also see you on Sunday at 6pm. We're having this series on our other group. The, the healing talk about marriage as ordained by God. If you're not married, it's a good place for you to come and hear what God has got to say so you will make the right decision. If you're married, it's also a good place for you to come to hear the roles that God has, you know, laid out for you as a spouse to play. If you're, if you're married and you're going through a divorce or separation or whatever it is or having issues, it's a good place to come because the one thing that God promised us was that as we go on this series, it's healing is going to come upon his people. So make it a date and be there with us at 6 p.m. on Sunday. Um, and the group the healing talk if you've not joined the group it's an open group it's like close group like this one it's an open group join us and let's have fun with God okay people enjoy the rest of your day God bless you ciao <laughs> I love you but God loves you so much more <laughs>